He's joining us on Skype right now from his home in Toronto. Um, that is probably worth $8 million now since the Toronto market is going up like 20% every five minutes, uh, which, which has been good. But uh, everyone say hi to Raj. And uh, so Raj, hey for, for those of you that don't know Raj, um, Raj has uh, been working with me now for about a year. We met in February, I think, of last year. No. Yes. Yes. Right? So it'll be a year and a half now that we've been working yes. together, sort of. be almost two years in February. And uh, But before we get to you and I, let's talk about um, so what I'd like to do right now is tell us uh, where you are now, uh, just for a quick second, how many units you have, the, the cash flow that you're making, um, how much money of your own did you really use to make to get these deals done, and then we'll rewind right to the beginning to how you got to the country, um, all that stuff, your kids, um, you know, your experience with your spouse, all that stuff that happened. Um, and we'll fast forward back and forth a bit. And this is a Q and A, by the way. This is not just me interviewing Raj; it's also you interviewing Raj and asking questions that might be affecting you specifically um, with things that are going on in your business and how maybe you can overcome those things. So it's not just about me asking the questions. Um, there is a question box here um, that you can ask, and um, and I'm hoping to see you interviewed here. I'm going to do an interview every three weeks or so. Um, I have about six lined up um, just like this. Raj is a very special individual. Uh, and I'm looking for more. So I'm looking for um, not only – he's really the hero of the week here uh, today, or the hero of the month, if you will, student of the month, if I could say it. Um, but best of all, he's a, he's the dad of a lifetime, which is really what this is all about. So um, without further ado, Raj, uh, t so tell us, uh, how many uh, how many units do you have now in the U.S.? Um, tell us what your real estate portfolio looks like uh, right now. 137 units is what I have, and they're all um, in Florida, uh, close to Orlando. I have a 22-unit apartment building. I have three mobile home parks, 50 units, 25 units, and 30 units. Okay. So that's what I have. Gotcha. And what is the monthly cash flow on that? You already put that on the email. I make $1,000 every day. What else? <laughs> Everybody knows that already, man. Other than the... CRA. Everybody else knows how much I make. <laughs> well, technically, the CR it's all U.S. corporations, so the CRA. That's another story. That's a totally other thing. But you, um, you, you uh, gross a lot more than that. Probably close to thirty-five, forty, fifty thousand dollars a month. Yes. But your yes. net is probably close to a thousand dollars a day, which is uh, about fifteen thousand dollars a piece for your children. Um, which is what we're going to talk about next. So first of all, I have a park, which is 30 units, which we have, um, we still have to start work on it. And we, we already talked about that between you helping me get that started. And in about three months, that should make about hundred K a year net. Right. So that'll add. Um, so right now you're at 135 units is what you're saying. And then you have, yeah. uh, and you have another, uh, a park right now that doesn't have any units on it. It's a dead park that you're, you're revamping that we're That's working right. on together. So and uh, how many units will that add to your portfolio? 26 units. 20, so you'll be at about 156 units, 100, uh, 160 units, 60, approximately. Yes. 160 units uh, by the end of the year. Yes, yeah. that's the plan. Very good. Okay, cool. Um, and which, which obviously takes care of your kids and your family. So let's talk about that for a second. Uh, tell us more about how you, how you started this journey because this is where we are now, uh, about 30 grand a month U.S., uh, give or take 5 or 10 grand. Um, more. Uh, I know he makes a little bit more than that, but let's call it a thousand dollars a day. Uh, let's rewind a little bit and tell us um, when did you come to Canada? Where did you immigrate from? Um, how much money did you have in your pocket? All this stuff. Give us give us the story. So I was born in India, and um, about at the age of thirty, I decided to leave India for various reasons that I don't want to get into. But and, and my dad is. Um, was a millionaire, so and, and I wanted to have a life which I wanted to start on my own, um, kind of do what I wanted to do, um, and not just take over the legacy. So that's what made me move to Canada. And my and my dad was very upset. Anyways, um, so he said, "I'm not gonna give you any penny when you leave." And I said, "That's all right." So um, so I came to Canada in 2001. I had two kids. One was my daughter was one year, and the other one was four one wife, and some money in my pocket. It was winter. I still remember standing at the airport, and, and I told my, my family, so sit at this bench, and I'm going to ask somebody where we're going next. So that's how I came to Canada, nobody that I knew of, and, and obviously some money and big dreams. Um, started my journey uh, trying to find an apartment, rented apartment. There was no, I had no car for a good year and a half. Of course, no work, no job, and 
a few things here, there, and, you know, finding work is the biggest work, and I'm sure everybody knows that. So I was trying to find work, and um, I did a little, there was a business about maintaining life plans in, in hotels and restaurants, and I did that for eight months, and I, right after six months, eight months, I knew it was not for me, lost $40,000. And uh, another six months after, I started an Indian restaurant, and um, I did that for from 2003 to 2005. Um, I was the owner, I was the order taker, I was the manager, I was a waiter, and whenever my dishwasher said "Tata," I was the dishwasher, which was kind of every Sunday, which was my day off. So I was working seven days. When I reach home, my kids are sleeping. When when they go to school, I'm sleeping. So we kind of used to see each other whenever whenever it was possible, which was very, very little. And I am kind of realized in two years, all I was work doing was working my ass off, not making enough money. When people are partying, I'm working. And when I am working, people are partying. And my kids are sleeping. I said, that's not what I want. And dishwashing. And one day I still remember washing dishes and, and my tears like flowing here. Like, Raj, what the heck? You bought a dishwashing job for $350,000. Great job done, bro. Anyways, I sold that restaurant. I made about $40,000 and back to original, finding work. And that's where I found, I went to one seminar, underlined seminar. Um, a friend of mine took there and he does, um, he used to do uh, online currency trading business. And there was a software that will tell you when currencies go up, make money. There was a whole thing, 30 days money back guarantee. And I was like, great. They said, do you have a credit card? I said, yeah, because obviously I had no money. And they said, we'll take credit card. I'm like, okay, I'm going to return it in 30 days, which I could not return in 30 days because they were so good in their marketing. And I, in four months, I lost my $35,000 that I make from the restaurant. And man, now I have no work, no money. We all know that's not a great situation. And this is 2003, 2004, 2005. That's when I have no money. Looking for work without money, and um, I started doing all kind of jobs that I could get, but they were not for me, and I was not for the job. I mean, my wife used to say I'm a loser. I can't do a job. I can't maintain a family. Uh, and I'm like, oh my god, I got a big problem. So then, you know, I have a problem in my life, and I don't have a reverse gear in my life. I, I, my car doesn't go back; it just goes front because. Either you can go back and 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 just go back to where you are, or you can make it happen. And and I cast, that was the only choice I was left with was to make it happen again. And I tried finding some jobs. I couldn't get jobs in Canada. The best job, easiest job, every job you can get is where you never get a salary. You just get a commission. And I had a it was a big uh, electronic store. I went for a job. They gave me a job for three days, and I said I can't do that. Now I'm starting looking for work. Coming back, I, my mortgage is thirty-five thousand dollars behind. Bank is calling me. My line of credit is about fifteen thousand dollars with CIBC Bank, and they're calling me, and I'm not picking up my phones. And my wife says, "That's it. We're going back. Let's go back to India." But the funny part is, we don't even have money to buy tickets to India. Well, I still have to work to get some money somewhere, anyway. So we got to. I I look through ads, go through different places. There was one place I went, and this guy says you can make hundred thousand dollars in a year, and you have to write on paper how much money do you want to make every year. And I still remember that story. And he said, so everybody's writing hundred twenty, hundred fifty, and I wrote thirteen thousand dollars. So when he looked at my, he says, Raj, you only want to make thirteen thousand dollars a year? I said, no, 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 I only want to make thirteen thousand dollars. That's it. He says, why is that? I said, $10,000 for line of credit I have to pay and $3,000 for a ticket that I can take my family back to India because I can't survive here. And guess what? I've not made that $13,000 till now. <laughs> <laughs> that $13,000 never came back to me. So that was um, a company that did, uh, in between I did 4 to 11 in the evening, uh, part-time jobs selling uh, water filters, uh, advertising. I still remember a guy firing me because he wanted me to overstay for, um, for like an hour discussing a deal and my daughter was waiting for um, uh, in the rain and I had to pick her up and I said, I gotta go and he says, you're fired. I said, alright, but I still gotta go. And I left. 
So I'm dealing with this on one side of my life and the other side of my life, uh, my wife thinks I'm a loser. I can't make money. My one daughter has a kidney problem. She needs to get dialysis done. Um, I'm like, Raj, you got to deal with five things at the same time. And I think that was making me more stronger and brave at, at the same time. And then, you know what? There was no choice anyways. I just had to fight and get out of it or I could, I would be a loser all my life. So I decided to fight. I, um, I started that POS company, um, where you do Visa, Mastercard, process and, and take my daughter six in the morning. POS does stand for stand for a piece of shit because that's what I think it means. P POS is point of sale, right? Point of sale. <laughs> POS. That was the end of POS for my life. That was a new beginning. Yes. Six in the morning, I would take my daughter to downtown. Her her dialysis starts at seven in the morning. I would sleep on a bench till nine thirty. Brush my teeth there. Just wash up my face. Go downtown. Work till twelve thirty. One o'clock, pick her up, drop back her, drop her back home, and have my lunch, and run back, work, come back nine thirty, dinner, do paperwork, sleep by two o'clock, send all the paperwork, six in the morning again, same thing, and it that for two and a half, three years. I was doing okay, you know, my daughter was doing okay. It's like um, trying to get life back and. Then I got to know my other daughter has a similar problem. I'm like, whoa, double trouble. So in the meantime, I had a choice. Um, and because my older daughter came in first, I gave my kidney to her. That was the only choice. And then my younger one went through the dialysis. We turned to the same story again. My wife couldn't take care of it. And she says, Tata, give me all the money you made in all these years from the POS. Take care of your daughters and have fun. I'm like... Oh my God. So now I have two daughters, medical issues, business just started. She took all the money. Um, I don't even know where the food is going to come from, how I'm going to handle all this and my business at the same time. Hang on, Raj. So I, I just, you're speaking a little fast. So you have a POS business, a point of sale business with Visa and MasterCard processing. You're trying to find these, these customers. You have a daughter that has uh, a kidney issue. Um, I think she has a very rare condition, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. And uh, it's like the odds of getting this is one in, I don't know what the it is, but it's one in millions. And your other daughter is diagnosed with the same thing. Yes. And you, um, she needs a kidney transplant. You give up her kidney for her, and then you realize that your other daughter has the same problem. Um, and then your daughter, your wife gets so stressed out that she basically says, I'm out. Is, is, yeah, I mean, is that what I'm hearing? She, she didn't say that clearly, but I know that was the reason she couldn't take care of it. Wow, that's a hard place to be, man. That's a hard place to be. And Are, the worst part is we've never had sisters, so I really don't know how to take care of two daughters, man. And I have been, like, I've been in women's section in Walmart when all women are looking at me. What the heck is this guy doing there? And I'm like, girls, let's fine, let's do some shopping and get out of here. <laughs> so. All right. But you got to do what you got to do, man. Yeah, like, what would you do? Well, you do what you got to do. Like, I, I exactly. I, I understand. I've been through two divorces, so I understand this. I get it. You got to do what I, you got to do. I haven't gone through your issues with uh, medical problems, so I, I know that's a whole other stress level that I have never experienced. I have nothing but respect right. for that. Nothing but respect. I remember I going to um. There's a huge, just like you have Best Buy. There, was, there used to be a future shop in Canada, the huge electronic store, commission only. And I went for an interview, and the guy said. You're too qualified, so I can't give you the job. And I said, listen, I need money for buying milk for my daughters tomorrow. And he says, here's 20 bucks. Take it and go. I'm here for job, not for the money. He says, then leave. Wow. Uh, well, what do you do, right? So, well, you got yeah. Paid. Well, that's that's a good – That's I don't know how many other people have been paid to leave a job interview. Think about that. You got paid to leave a job interview. I don't think anyone on this call has ever done that. I've been fired twice. And I've never been paid for job interview, so that's pretty good, man. Good job. So anyway, well, so I know I, at the time it was terrible. I, I don't think I thought like that at that time. At that <laughs> time, that twenty dollar bill that I was leaving was really so important for me, Marco. I have to tell you one one part of my story. I was in Burger King, five bucks in my pocket, and my my kids thought I had like I was a rich guy. I never let them feel my problem. So we walk into this McDonald's, not Burger King, and they have this. I think Burger King. I can't remember Hooper, and I'm like special for a dollar 
and they wanted some chicken sandwich. I said, okay, there's two chicken sandwiches. And they said, fries too, that like, okay, fries too. Uh, can we get a Coke? Sure, Coke too. And I'm like, with a dollar. So I had no choice to buy that beef burger that I never ate. I took a bite. I literally threw up. I'm like, so what happened then? I said, I think I have a tummy problem. I'm good. Don't worry. I'll go home, have a food. And those few things I never want to forget in my life because that makes me the man I am today. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, but God has been very kind. I have been trying to work hard. So my, yeah, so my wife left. We got one kidney transplant done in 2015, 16. The other one for my other daughter in 2017, and that's when my wife left. And our two daughters were going hospital back and forth, medicines, um, trying to work. My customers calling me, and I get I I would get like 500 calls a day from all my customers and everybody else. And here's I'm taking care of my daughters, dropping them to school, making their breakfast, sending them, and I'm saying. I'll, I'll call you later. I'm in a meeting. And you know what? I was in the kitchen preparing breakfast or lunch or whatever. And, but I, you know, uh, it was hard. It was really hard, but I had to pull through because then what was the choice left? I mean, I just couldn't let this fall off and, 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 and do what? Like do what next? I had, I had at least a hope of having something, some business that I have rather than, when I was finding, you know, work. So that's where we are. And then. So now you, you, you increase your point of sale business to, I guess you've done pretty, you did fairly well with that. You ran with it. You created some processes in there. Exactly. So, so from 2008, seven, eight to 2000 and now 16, seven, eight years, I stick with that business. And that's the business that made me what I am. You know, my, my, my basics were mad. I, I was able to, actually, I was able to, you know, that's the story where how I meet you. I was by chance able to buy three uh, family homes, which I was renting, hoping to retire from that income. Gotcha. So you bought some property in Toronto. Yeah, yes. Okay. That's correct. So let's take a look at that real quick. So let's, I have a calculator pulled up right here, um, which you can't see, but I have a calculator up here. So um, you bought one, give me a, a number on one property that you purchased um, on one of them. What's it worth I today? Purchase, I purchased one for 600 Okay. And what do you rent it out for? You don't need a calculator for that, man. The numbers are too small. <laughs> I only got $2,400, $2,250 rent for that 20, a month. 2250 a month. Canadian. Yeah. All right. Uh, times 12. All right, then that's twenty seven thousand a year. It's not terrible. Um, then you have taxes. What are your tax property taxes on that? About seven grand. All right, so you're left with. Um, all right, and then you have insurance. What are your insurance costs on that? About twelve hundred dollars. All right, so twelve hundred. Now you don't have management on that at all, right? No the management. Um, and you have a mortgage to pay. Absolutely. All right. What are your mortgage payments a month? I see out of my pocket. All right. Here's- so, so my question is: Is do you make any money every, every month? I put every money in this in this house every month. So you don't make, my you don't make money every month, but the property is going up in value. So you have sort of an offset, right? Because Toronto market's doing. I well. um, here's the thing. I mean, yes, yes, and no. It's going up in value while I sleep. I have to be so careful and watch the market every day because if the way it's going up, it's going to go down while I sleep as well. So I have to cash out at one point. Because that profit that's in the air has to be cashed out at the right time. And you know and I know that right time nobody knows. Exactly. Well, let's just do a, uh, let's just do a comparison real quick. You bought the, uh, the property in Toronto that's worth 600000 or you paid 600000 whatever you paid I for. I paid six hundred. You paid six hundred. Um, you paid um, about the same Canadian for a property in the U.S. Um, the one for in the twenty-two unit, the twenty-two yes. unit building. You paid four fifty for it, which is about six hundred Canadian at the time. I think five fifty, right. six hundred. Yeah, that property makes you eight thousand US a month. Yes, net or gross. Yes. Net or gross. It's not gross, bro. It's net. <laughs> <laughs> which is about eleven thousand dollars, which is one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. So you're making $120,000 a year in your pocket versus in the in Canada where you're actually just making fictitious equity based on what the market is doing. 
So one is hard cash, cash in the bank. One, yeah. I have to cash out one day. Yeah. To, so one uh, is hard cash in the bank and the other one is money that might happen or might not happen. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, Vancouver lost 15%, 40, 40% overnight. Nobody knew that. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Well, and Toronto now is getting the gain, but as soon as they put a tax yeah. on that overnight, then it'll change as well. But who knows that? Nobody has a crystal ball. We don't know what's going to happen. So one of the reasons we like um, – one of the reasons I'm a big proponent of uh, of, of cash flow – is the rents are always going to be there. People always need a place to live. And if you have enough units, then they pay for your lifestyle, which is great. Which is, you know, so anyway, so um, so you have a couple properties and you're, um, so you're tabling in the real estate market. And now why did you want to go into real estate to begin with? Why real estate? Why not just put more money into your business? Why would you even, why real estate? Why would you go into, go into property? Because I, um, I realized lately in the last three years, I was, my business is doing good. I'm making money. See, before I could not leave Toronto because I had no money. Then I couldn't leave Toronto because my kids were small and I had no money and taking care of them. Now I'm doing good in business, but my kids are in school. We still can't leave. And then my business takes, I get 500 calls a day from people. I have such a big client base. Even if I hire people, there's still going to be, like, I just, I couldn't leave. I left twice. I, I used to get like 500 calls, 800 calls, voicemails, text me, And I'm like, watch. I used to sleep with my phone literally because people in the West Coast would call me two in, two in the midnight. And that's when they close at 11, 12 o'clock at night. So I kind of knew I have a working model that kind of gave me a stand. But I can't stick to this for life. I need to do something else. So when, and again, it's not about me. I know my kids can't do this. Nobody else can do this. The moment you take my name off this business, this business is gone. And I wanted some legacy that I could leave for my children. I mean, I worked so hard to be where I am today. I don't want my kids to go through this again. And I mean, the pain that you go through, the hard work that you go through, the all the negativity that you get from outside world, I didn't want them to go through that. And with all the trouble that they have, medical issues, I wanted to make sure that I can leave some, some kind of a system that generates a monthly income for sure. And not only for them, for myself as well. I don't want to be doing that every morning go and catch a fish or get a new customer, the retention and all that for all my life. I mean, I have my life to live. So the, the business model that you have is what I understand is what the, the, the trap that most people have when they have a, um, a business is they're trapped in their own business. When they stop working, they stop earning. So, and you can't really leave it to your kids because they don't have the, the experience, the skill sets. They have special needs. Um, you know, we'll be honest. Um, they're, um, I don't know how much you want to share with that, but you know, they're, they're going to need help for a while. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I think, I, I'm, are they, I think they're, I don't want to say out of turn. I don't want to say anything stupid here. Are they legally blind as well? Is yeah. that's true? Yeah. So, um, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get too much into your personal stuff either. So I know they're, I've, I've, they're fantastic kids. I've met them both. They're fantastic individuals. They're wonderful, wonderful kids. And, um, uh, th they're going to need help to take care of themselves. And, um, they're not able to step into those shoes, even if they knew exactly what to do. And would you even want to subject them to that business where they're a slave to the business? Cause that's technically what it is or a complete slave to the business. Marco, even if, even if I had perfectly healthy kids, I would have probably not put them in this spot because in business, it's like up and down cycle. I probably was at the right time, at the, at the right place at that time, working hard. God was with me. My why was so important. It was for the right purpose. It was not for going to, to, to Vegas or casino and play, you know, yeah. blow off the money. It was for the right purpose. God was helping me. But I knew every business has a cycle. I mean, this is not going to last like that for the next 50 years. No business lasts like that for 50 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I know we can go past in any business and see. Yeah. So, yeah. and then... Again, that I inside had a fear of one thing every morning. What if I don't get a customer today? What if my customers leave me? And they would always say, I'm going to leave you. I'm going to cancel your contract. And that thing I would hear every day, even in my dreams sometimes. I'm like, what the heck? I mean, I need to get out of this to into something where I can tell my people, I, if you don't pay my rent, I will throw you out. <laughs> You're in more control. 
So yeah. coming back to uh, so you 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 had the you got the idea that real estate was a good idea. You bought some single family. Actually, no, that's no? not true. Oh, okay. I really, no. Oh. I I really thought the real estate was good till I had one, and then I'm saying yes, I have on on paper I have this much dollars that I own properties, but then what? Start selling them and start eating that money. That's not right business sense. And I didn't know what to do next. I have a friend who has um, commercial plazas and gas stations, and that's what I met him. And he says, oh, forget the homes. Get into commercial. You'll make 5 6% return on your money, and you can get cash and cash about 8%. And honestly, I didn't even understand what cap means, what cash and cash means. All I knew is he's doing good, so I can do something good. You know, when, you, when, when you're looking at other people's business, all of them look fantastic <laughs> somehow. So... <laughs> it's true. When someone's doing better than you, they think, wow, this is amazing. This must be amazing. Exactly. So, so I started looking at commercial real estate. I started looking at gas stations, plazas. And and, and I used to have, there's a, there's a magazine called Business Exchange here, and, and we can get that for free in different places. And if it's 6 7%, you see a colored ad poll that says 7% cap. So obviously, 7% was a great return wow. for my money, which was making me 1%, right. or maybe nothing. Exactly. So, so, so you have, uh, so now you're, 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 what is your burning desire at this point? So you have a, you have a, and this is a very important question um, that everyone should really pay attention to at this point, is you have a business that you really can't stand. You're a slave to your business. It's like being in a bad marriage, being in a bad business. Yes. It's, it's actually worse than being in a bad marriage. Because when you let go of your business, you're literally broke. Although when you let go of your marriage, you're broke too. But it's a, <laughs> it's a different a different experience. But it's um, so you're 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 in a business that you don't really enjoy. You want you want some sort of outlet. You have a family that um, you're the only breadwinner at this point because your spouse has has abandoned your the family sadly, um, which is terrible. Your kids need a lot of help. Um, they they are you have a lot of pressure, a lot of stress around you. And what is it that you're looking for? So what's 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 the so sort of the components that you need to find? What is the perfect business model then for you at this point? What you also forgot is I can't go and do a full time job, even if somebody offered me a million dollars a month. Right. I can't. Right. I understand. I understand. Well, a million dollars a month, you probably would figure it out. But you would be unhappy and you would let go of it at one point. I'm the same uh, way. I understand not that. Because I can't subject and, or leave my kids to some strangers. I understand. Because for money. I, mean, I understand that. Yeah. I understand. Okay. Well, that's a very good answer. That's a very good answer. So what's your per perfect business model at this point? So what is it that you're looking for? I don't know that. At that point, I really didn't know what I knew I was looking for. All I knew was I need to get out of this and do something else. And what was something else? Every morning was a new idea that failed by the end of the day. That was something else. <laughs> okay, very good. I, I One day I owned a gas station. The other day I owned a <laughs> subway. The third day I, I, I went and met a franchiser of a and And every night I said, no, I can't do that. So tell me about the franchises. So why didn't you buy a franchise? That's what most Canadians do. Most, most Tim Hortons are owned by immigrants. Most subways are owned by immigrants. Um, they actually, I think they actually advertise to immigrants to sell them franchises. That's how it works. That's the scam in Canada. And possibly Australia too. I don't know who is on the, on the call right now or who's listening. But as an entrepreneur, franchise is a legal scam. Where you pay three times the money for the coke that you can buy from Costco, but you're not allowed. You have to buy the flour for pizza from the franchisor at three times the price. Um, the sign outside, whether it's a pizza or Subway or, or Vings or whatever, alone costs $100,000 because that's what you sign on the dotted line. And why I didn't buy it? One, initially I didn't have money and two, and uh, in the end, I did not want um, to buy another business where I um, have, if my, um, after doing the restaurant, I knew in retail, if my chef says ta-ta, if my baker says bye-bye, if my manager says ta-ta, everybody has the right to take a leave, but me, who's going to spend all the money in this franchise business. 
So I didn't want to put money um, in a business and be back slave to it. And this time in a retail box and I'm paying twice or one and a half times the price of the raw materials to the franchisor working till two o'clock at uh, three, one of 12, one to one hour at night. That's not what, that's not what I wanted. I mean, that was like from one bad marriage to the second bad marriage. And once you're an entrepreneur, you understand, I don't, I don't need to pay half a million dollars to somebody to learn how to bake a pizza or how to make a sandwich. I do it without paying half a million dollars in my home for my kids. <laughs> this is true, but a lot of people do it. They want to buy a Tim Hortons for the status because they feel like it's done for you and it's, uh, it's some sort Here of is system. The thing. Yeah. Here is the thing. Some people want to spend all their money to buy a cake for 50 bucks and some people want to buy the ingredients for five bucks and bake it themselves. I am the second, second kind of person. I understand. Yeah. I mean, people want to pay a million dollars for, to make 5% return, 7% return. And they're happy. And I'm glad because if everybody knew our formula, bro, where I live, where will we be going? Yeah, exactly. We, we have too much competition. So we're happy exactly. that people aren't doing it. Everyone's not doing This isn't for everyone what we're doing right now. And uh, that's, that's clear. It's, it's for people that really want to put the effort in, the time in. Um, which, and not quit. Yeah, that's well, the most we're not important. even at that point yet. So we, we haven't met yet. So how did, how did we meet? So how did this happen? So you have a certain amount of comfort in your life now. You have some equity and some property. Um, you have the, you, you hate your, you hate your business. It's making money. You're working 24 seven. You understand that the day that you stop working is the day that you stop earning. So you're literally on a hamster wheel and the second you get off or you get tired or you get sick, your family suffers. So you could lose, you're basically three months away from losing everything at this point. That's how most people are. If you're on the treadmill, you have a job, you lose your, your income source. Most people are three months away from bankruptcy. Yes. If you look at it that way. If you stop working, you're three months away from bankruptcy. And it's a terrible place to be. So you have, uh, you want more. You're hungry. You've you've come from a place where you've finally been able to take care of your kids. Um, you're in a sort of a, but you're hungry. So I guess you you see uh, some sort of uh, either Facebook ad or radio commercial, TV ad. Toronto Star. Toronto Star. Toronto Star. So you saw us in the Toronto Star. You come to. And the uh, first thing I thought, another seminar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was. And so you um, you attended? I did not want to attend it. You did not want I to attend it? Okay. Come. So you didn't, you, you had to, something must have well, happened. Well, karma is different, but I never wanted to come there. Unfortunately, my bank is right across and you just came right into my backyard in, in Mississauga where I am in that hotel. And my bank, I'm like, it was so cold and my meeting finished. It was Friday and I actually just came to have a cup of coffee from your free seminar, bro. Thanks, man. And, uh, Not, so, but I, actually, I just kind of thought, let me just check what's going on. I, I still remember Friday afternoon coming in, and there was some guy, I forget his name all the time. George. Who, George did a did an awful job. Thanks. And, uh, and I came home. And then I got a text message from you, I'm coming in the evening. And I said, all right. Another hour to see what's happening because he just couldn't explain what was going on. But I kind of was so much more um, curious to meet you, to see what you want to basically, what kind of scam you can do to me. And I made sure I didn't take my wallet or any checkbook to your seminar when I met you. <laughs> huh? Well, okay. So you came to the training. Um, I, I think I spoke as George. I heard George has done. I was training another speaker so I could get out of the business of speaking. George didn't do such a good job. Uh, and then we text message everyone that was there earlier saying, hey, if you want to come back, come on back and I'll explain it better. And I did. And then we, uh, I remember you staying and then you telling me something. Do you remember? That what I'm into commercial. I don't want to, you, you were showing how homes and I yeah. said, listen, I'm going to buy a commercial plaza or, or something at that time which is about seven percent cap rate and you said are you crazy i'm gonna get you 15 percent cap rate and i thought in my heart big scammer yeah so he's big scammer how can you get 15 percent yeah and i really wanted to see how much more you could scam me and that's where <laughs> I, that's when i came to your three-day training like, so you invested yes you, you, you dropped the the bucks to come to the the the, the three-day 
skeptical, obviously, like most people are, expecting to be, um, you know. And you signed anything. a document that's a money back guarantee. Yeah. If you don't like it, don't force the second after, day. After, after the first day, we that, that's our guarantee. After the first day, if you don't think this is for you, get out. That's, I that's have to fair. tell you something that you still don't know by now. Tell, tell me, now. Tell We've me, discussed tell everything, me. but this one thing. Tell me, tell me. I, I wrote a check, and this and the training was like a week after, and I knew you're gonna put the check from US. And you would not be able to cash it. So if I didn't like what I was seeing, I would have put a stop payment on it. Gotcha. Well, we wouldn't have cashed it if you didn't like it. We're not going to do that. Yeah. So well, after who would trust the seminar people, bro? Right. I don't, I understand. Hey, we, we've had plenty of checks that have been. I'm back. just telling you the truth. I, I appreciate it. I, it's all good, man. It's hey, it's. It, it, I understand. Hey, I I learned. I started from a seminar, and I've been to a lot of shitty seminars, and there's a lot of them. And not everyone actually does talks and talks and walks the walk. So I understand that. So you came to a three day. Uh, yes. And uh, you sat in the front. I remember I taught the class. You sat in the front. You were engaged. Um. And um. So obviously you had a good experience at the three day. Yes, absolutely. And yes. I learned. I learned so much, and I knew. Here is the thing. I, I taught to myself three things. One, after meeting you and also on one-to-one, -one, I knew that you know the business. Like, you know the insights. It's not like you're just trying to teach out of a book. There was no book, no manual. You were trying to teach out of your experience, the real stuff. It was like the tricks of the trade. Yep. And it's so important to... You know, anybody can be a real estate agent, mortgage broker, but unless you know the tricks of the trade, you can never succeed in the business. You know, that's the real story. Well, again, this is not about me. This is about you. So you attended the no, training. But so that was what I yes. taught. And the second thing was, I said, if you can do it, I can do it. It's true. I'm not, I'm not that special. Well, you have all the same powers that I have. There's nothing missing other than the experience. Right. You know the business, I don't know the experience. That's the only difference. And uh, that applies to everyone on this call, by the way. If you're listening to this call, anyone that's on this call can do this. If you just... 100%. Yes. Somebody will have 500 doors. Somebody will have 200. Somebody will have 50. Somebody will have 10. And they all will draw their own ceiling, by the way, because there's no such ceiling. Yeah. So... With Matt, I, I signed up with the Diamond Program with you, yep. and we had a real bad start. We did. Four months, and I thought, man, another seminar. I okay. really did. Yep. And then we caught up. We started working. Um, I still remember I found a great deal in Tennessee. This is uh so you st you signed up I believe in February and then we started in earnest yeah. in April so it was two months of rocky times. Yes. I don't know if it was four, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna chime in and say the first month I was pretty busy, the second month you were pretty busy, and we kept missing each other, and uh, we couldn't quite get the schedules to match, and then we finally figured it out, we nailed it down, and then once we started rocking together, you found a property in Tennessee. I believe. That's right. That was. Um that was a property in Tennessee that I had. It was listed for 140. I had a contract at 86. Okay, so it was worth 140. Now, when we started working together, you didn't do commercial at all. You were a little scared. I remember you telling me, Marco, I don't want anything over a million dollars. I can't handle it. It's not for me. This is uh, this was just yeah, something that you had for yourself. Yeah, this was a small deal because even I was trying to test you at the same time. Uh, oh, were you? Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you for testing me. So, so, but you were. You have to understand, my yes. money is not inherited money, I and it's that. every cent that I put into my pocket every day. I, 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 it's so much important for. I respect that. that. I respect that. I respect that. But nevertheless, um, we 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 started small with a small house, which is where everyone used. To, generally, it's good to start with a, which some small. But there's something on in the bracket. My dad always told me, "Do not buy any property that you cannot touch and feel." And I have a friend who has three, who had three units in Florida at that time. And I used to make so much fun, so much fun. Like, who buys property in the U.S.? Are you crazy? And now I was about to do the same thing. So I was like scared and said, what the heck are you doing? Guys? But there was something telling me inside, this is the right way. This is the right way. And I always go with my gut feeling. Very good. 
So we got so Tennessee. Let's fast forward. Four. You got to do actually the first deal you got. I didn't let you buy. That's correct. They were fourteen units or fifteen units in, for two hundred in, in Memphis. In Memphis, they were. Memphis. No, it was. I think it was. And, and, you know, and I'm saying Memphis. Every deal I bring to you. Yes. You say no, and I didn't pay you to not buy the deals. I paid you to buy the deals. <laughs> Do you remember? You were so mad because it was a. It was. I think we. It was fifteen units for one hundred and fifty thousand. It was like ten thousand a unit. That's right. That's right. An old couple, and they were managing it themselves, and the the cap rate was like forty percent. It was like this huge yes. return. And you were literally having a financial orgasm over it. You were all excited. You're like, this is it. This is it. I'm so happy I found this deal. And then, and what did I tell you? Uh, the area was bad. And you said, and I really insisted. So you said, if you can find a management, call 10 management companies. If you can find a management, then we'll talk. If you find one management company, just one, just we'll find talk. one, then you can, I'll, I'll, I'll bless it to buy it. And how many did you find that would do it? I didn't find anyone till now. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad we did buy that deal, man. Yes. If if that was my first deal without you, that would have been the last deal of my business. Most people would buy that deal because the numbers looked right, but they don't know. They don't see past the the the, the watermelon looks green, but on the inside it's rotten. Now we know how to sell to those people. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the other side of the story yeah. now. Well, we never. Yes. Well, if someone wants to buy it, we can't stop them from doing it. But um, it's not something I would buy for sure. It's not something I would get involved in. But um, if you don't know what to look for, it's uh, it, it can be a terrible deal, and uh, it's, it's worse to get a bad deal than a. Marco, we're programmed to buy a deal on the face of it or through a real estate agent. It looks great, 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 great. But now we know in any deal. There are too many more moving parts inside than on the outside. In fact, inside is more important than outside. Yeah. Now we know that. Yes. Yes, you do. Yeah. You do for sure. So the the outside looked fine, but the inside was bad management, bad area. Some people are asking, like, what was wrong with the deal? Um, number one is bad area means high crime, high turnover. Uh, if a management company can't do it, um, you shouldn't do it. If you don't feel safe picking up the rent yourself, then you shouldn't do it. Um, you would need a gun to go into the neighborhood. Uh, very, very bad area. Most people don't understand that war zones are uh, do exist in the U.S. where people get murdered every day in those areas. It's it's literally a war zone. It's it's very unsafe. Most people don't you know in Toronto or or Sydney or in London you know there's not those places where people will shoot each other dead uh, on the street just for the the way you walk or the way you look at someone or the color of your skin. It's uh, it's a very dangerous place in some areas. So um, you're, you're bringing properties to me. They're terrible. I tell you not to buy them. You start getting frustrated, which is normal because you're trying to make money. But it's part of the process um, to actually yes. – th 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 which you've learned now is saying no is more important than saying yes. I know that now. And I just learned four days before. After one and a half year for training, I learned the, learned the most important part of this business is we don't want to do this. But everybody I know, Beth and me, I was the same way. Whoever you mentor, first thing what they go home and they think about what? You know what? I need a deal. I need a deal when? Right now. I need a deal right now. And I always want. But yeah. now we know. We don't need a deal. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're at that point now, so you understand it. Yes. But it gets people. It, it takes some time for people to get it to that point. It takes some time to understand. Yes. That's right. And once you internalize it, then it, it It's a sense. mindset. Yes, it does. It's like you're going, going into the market to buy a home. You want to come back buying a home. Not not buying a home. Well, here, here, here's the analogy that I've used recently: is you all want a filet mignon, but you're all going to McDonald's and wondering why they don't have it on the menu. You all want a steak, but you're going to a seafood place and there's no steak there. You're yeah, going then, or true. you want lobster, and you go to Swiss Chalet and you say, "Why is there no lobster here?" And you get pissed off because there's no lobster. You're just not looking in the right spot. You don't have the right you you don't know you don't have the right map yet to the right restaurant that gets you the right menu. So we meet, so you, you, we meet, you take the three day, you're skeptical, you're ready to put a stop payment on the check. Uh, you engage in some mentorship with me, which isn't cheap, by the way, for those of you that know that it's, you know, I, I, I charge quite a bit for it. Uh, and, uh, so we engage, we have a rocky two month start. You find a couple of properties. I don't like them. You're pissed off because it's not a good deal. Then you find something that actually is a deal, which is a single family property. So tell us about that for a second. So you bought a, a property that's worth how much? Uh, it was worth 140. Yeah, I had it on a contract at eight, close to 85, 86. Mm -hmm. And then you said, "Let's do um, inspection." Inspection. 
And then inspection came back and I couldn't even read what it meant because we didn't know how to read an inspection report. And you read and you said, terrible, terrible. What do you mean? And I was hoping, he doesn't say, we can buy this. And I'm like, we'll start. <laughs> how many deals can I bring to him? One, he doesn't like the area. Other, he doesn't like inspection. I'm like, what the heck? And that's what you said. This is terrible. I said, so what do I do next? Just call the buyer and say, fix this. Actually, we had two contracts. And we did, and, and, and it was terrible on both. We did this to both the both the, the there was one was a wholesaler and one was um, the seller directly, the owner, and um, I remember you telling me tell him I wanted at seventy two or something. The seller, the seller. So either he does the work or he gives, he gives me a credit of twelve thousand or fourteen thousand dollars to fix all the discrepancy on the property. So basically, it was we can't buy it for this number. There's too much stuff to fix. It costs only five thousand to fix it, and I said, "Go ask for twelve thousand for the for the effort." So if you're going to yes. get a discount, don't just get the discount on what it would cost. You need to have a sweetener for you doing the work. And how did you feel about that? Going back once you had a we contract, had an argument. I said, "I can't do that. That's not right." Because, like, and that's when I learned first time in my life the real deal is after the deal. But in Toronto, see, we're not we're not trained. This is not how business works here. Like you sign a deal, you're done, five thousand dollar deposit, this is your home, you're good. Or you lose your money. But here was a deal after the deal. So I literally picked up the phone and and read what you kind of asked me to write. I read those lines with no emotion and regret that I'm doing a wrong thing. And he agreed. And I was like, whoa, he agreed. So we had a new contract, and now the same property. I had it on a contract for seventy four. So did so you, so at, while this is going on, you have something else brewing on the other side, right? That's a twenty two unit apartment building in Crystal River. Right. So your baby, if I can call it your baby, it um, is. Yes. So you bought a twenty two unit in Crystal River. Um, what is the income on that one? Eight thousand a month, I believe. It's it was seventy four thousand dollars a year at that time. Okay, but now we're at one hundred because we kept increasing rents and it's been second cycle already. We're one and a half year in. Yes. So you you you've done what you're supposed to do, which is increase rents over time as you improve the property. So yes. So you've it started off at seventy four thousand. Now, for those of you that understand commercial real estate, if it's worth seventy four thousand, if it makes seventy four thousand dollars net, you add a zero to that at a ten cap. If the market cap is actually a little bit higher, it's the building is worth about eight hundred thousand. In Toronto, that building would be worth one point two million all day long to make seventy four thousand. But in Florida, um, you we we bought it from from an individual that wanted to sell it. Um, he had refused four fifty a few times before. That's right. And I said, ask again for four fifty, even though he had refused because we'll be, we'll be able to close. Now you have exactly. We, now I understand why he agreed. That time I didn't. It was the closing part. Yes. And he said thirty days, thirty days, and we said yes. Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's not the number. Sometimes it's the speed that counts. So he, we put the contract together for four fifty, yes. and not knowing where the money was going to come from. That's you, true. You borrowed the money to buy it. Yes, a hundred percent borrowed money. One hundred percent. You didn't use a money out of your pocket. It was all bank money, correct? And I'm in TD Bank, sitting texting you. I wanted to be out of this deal because I was shitting in my pants because this was first time I'm investing in US. And I couldn't believe myself owning a 22-unit apartment building. I, I kind of, I think the mental, it's all about the mental block that we create ourselves the most, where I can be. And I could, I don't think I, I, I never kind of thought I could be there. Anyway, so I remember texting you that I want to be out of this deal and lose my deposit just because I, anyways, I'm glad we did it. And then I wanted to throw that Tennessee deal in the garbage. You basically said, I want to throw this in the garbage. I'm done. Because you're just closing on this one, which was uh, uh, basically 72 or 74000 uh, $74, dollars a year in, in income. Yes. Um, and after you pay off the bank, you're still netting about 50000 a year net, at least. And I was on cloud nine. I was right. very happy. Right. Yes. So you're very happy because you've financed it pretty much as close to 100% as you can. Um, and now you have this other deal. Now you have 22 families that are basically waking up in the morning to pay you every month, which is, is yes. a good feeling, which you can talk about in a minute. Uh, but then there's this other Tennessee deal that you now have under contract. You're like, I'm just going to throw this in the trash. I just don't want it anymore. And I said, don't do that. Stop. Wait till Sunday. 
I have a wholesaling training coming on Sunday. Why don't you come to the wholesaling class and learn how to wholesale a property? So you'll learn how to take the contract, the piece of paper. By the way, did you give the seller a deposit? No. How much did it cost you to print up the, the contract? Like one cent or whatever. Right. Well, nothing because it's virtual, right? It's all email. Yeah. You put the contract together and um, and then you actually found someone at the training that wanted to buy it that was not uh, not an advanced student, someone that just wanted to buy a piece of property, basically want to buy the yes. cake, not make the cake. They weren't interested yes. in learning how to make the cake. They just want to buy the cake. Yes. And I believe – is this it? Yeah. So you actually flip this for how much? 96500 All right. And what did you make on this deal? This is the hard rate here. About $22,000. How much? About twenty-two thousand dollars. Twenty-two grand. You made five k. Yeah, twenty-one thousand and thirteen dollars is exactly mm -hmm. what you made. Five thousand dollars deposit that you got back plus sixteen thousand and thirteen dollars. This is the HUD right here, and you did this on the. What date is this? It was about August September. It, it was July twenty-eighth of fifteenth. Mm -hmm. And you closed on the your other property on July sixth, which is my birthday. Oh, the sixth of June. Sorry, sixth of June, and this is the pro this is the closing statement here. You bought it for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, four hundred fifty thousand yep. one hundred and three dollars with closing costs. Pretty damn good. And now the building is worth now the building is done. now the building is worth over nine hundred thousand. So you have four hundred fifty thousand dollars in equity U.S. Yes. You made twenty thousand dollars on the other with with no money out of your pocket for someone that just wanted That's the property. Right. Yes. And how are you feeling at this point now? I thought I was done. That's it. All right. And I still remember meeting you and you said the real money is still to come. The real money is still to come. So then what? We fast forward some time and now you, 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 what's, what, what did you just uh, close on if just a few months ago? A few things. Uh, two other projects. Two other projects. 75 units, 50 and 25 units mobile home park. You know, Carla? Yeah. So 75, 70, 80 units right there. Yeah, yeah, eighty units. It's a it's a it's a beautiful park, very nice park. I've been to it a few times. It's very close to your Crystal River property, which is kind of cool. Yes. So it's 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 very convenient. There's a lot of upside to that as well. I think you're making about twenty two, twenty three thousand, maybe twenty four thousand net on that one, and there's still thirty forty percent upside on that one as well. Actually, more. Yeah. There are we can put more homes. Rents can go up, stabilize and everything. They're, but yes, about 30, 40% up. So, are you happy? I was happy before the weekend, bro. <laughs> Why? What happened over the weekend? <laughs> Honestly, I'm seriously telling you. You just... Um, what happened? Though? First of all, tell me what happened this weekend. The ceiling went up. The ceiling went up. Why? What happened? Tell me what happened this weekend. The commercial, the commercial training. Now I know this five hundred thousand a million is not what I'm into. This I promise next year in a ten million dollar, and you'll have an we'll have another interview. Ten million dollars for sure. So you've just raised your ceiling a little bit. The only the reason he says that is because he witnessed us me doing a, a ten million dollar deal right in class actually. And if you can do it, bro, I can do it. Yes. That's my that's my slogan all the time. Yeah, we actually uh, there's a, a building in Albuquerque and off a market deal that someone brought me. I did the call right in class and negotiated it, and uh, the the financing's already in place. It's already good to go. It's um, it's four hundred thousand dollars a year in passive income on that deal for doing literally just a couple phone calls. It's pretty cool. So I'm just gonna make those couple of phone calls. I'm already started doing it. In <laughs> fact, I sold the moon to three people. Oh, good for you. Good for you. So some of you won't know what that means, but you'll understand it. And some will know. Yes, some, some will know. know. Yes. Yes. So that's where my story is with the, and I have that 30 unit park, uh, 26 unit park that I'm gonna start work, start working on in week two weeks. Yep. But hopefully by Feb March we'll have that up and make about 100k uh, yep. a year from there. Yeah. So if you look back over the last year, what was the hardest part? The hardest part of the last let's let's call it the I, I understand probably dealing with your your um, your personal life and juggling with your business life was probably close to the hardest part. But other than that, on the business side, on the on the real estate side, 
um, I guess what was the biggest shift or the biggest aha moment or the biggest, the one thing that if it, 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 the listeners are listening to right now, if you're listening to this, this recording or this video, what is it that you should, the one piece of advice that you give to someone that just is starting out that wants to have 150 units in, in a year, um, someone that wants to uh, get over whatever their fear is that this is going to be hard or it's going to be easy or it's going to, if, you know, if you, if you do a deal and it falls apart, that it's the end of the world. Give me some. Give me a good piece of advice, please, or a serious piece of advice. And uh, by the way, this is a Q and A time, so if you guys have any questions specifically right now, now is a good time to to, to um, put in your chat box. Uh, I have this question. I'll even unmute you. You can ask a question directly to Raj. I'll connect you direct uh, since you're live. Um, I, I'd be happy to connect you guys to make sure that you guys um, are you know are connected diff uh, directly. So first, a piece of advice, and then we'll get into some questions. I have more than one. Well, first is either you can work hard to achieve your goals or you can work hard, work hard to prove that the system sucks. You're still working hard anyways. You know what I mean. I and do most know. people know what I'm saying. Well, there's a lot of naysayers out there. There's a lot of people that think that, you know, that maybe still I am a scam or that real estate's a scam or that want to post, you know, bad negative things on the internet um, on people that are doing well. Um, and they spend a lot of time and a lot of negative energy in groups that are just negative. Um, have you ever belonged to any of those groups or uh, participated in any of those groups or, um, I was busy buying property when people were doing the groups. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know that already, you know how many, what I did, you know, exactly. Oh, I know, I know, I know. And some, and if you, and here's the thing is if you listen to the wrong advice, you're going to get the wrong result a hundred percent of the time. Again, there is ninety nine percent negativity outside in the in in the outside world. In the world, period. we just have to decide what I want in my life. Yes. And if I go with negative negativity, who's going to take care of my kids? Yeah. And and two is think big, aim big. You got to follow your heart, and even God helps those who help themselves. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, if people think. You know, if if Marco can do it, Raj can do it, then I'm sure there are twenty thousand more Raj who are doing much better than me. I mean, look look at this. Four days before, three days before, the president of the country is Donald Trump, who for who two weeks before literally lost everything, and he's a president. That's that's called fighting spirit. If if you know that that's called fighting spirit. I mean, you could do it. I could do it. Everybody can do it, but they got to first believe that they have to fight or they can complain. All right. So Patrick has a question. Um, how do I really start? Bro, you already started by being on the spinner. So how do I start? How do I find a deal? How do I, you know, what do I, what do I do? How do I, what was your starting point? So you, you made a decision. You came to the three day. Um, yes. So that was your starting point. You. Yes. You chose to work with me for whatever reason. Yes. And I'm not cheap. And you don't, like you said, you, you, it was, you know, it was you're not big investment. cheap. You're not cheat. <laughs> I'm not cheat. I'm not cheap. You're not cheap and you're not cheat. <laughs> what does that mean? It means you're the right guy. I mean, I know if people would trust you to, uh, for their, for their money and life, uh, you would not take them on the wrong path and you would take, you would make sure they got the results. And I know so many people who are unhappy and complaining. All of them, most of them have a deal now. I know that already. Right. You just have to listen to the right advice. That's all. And it's time. I mean, if, if I got it in three months, somebody might get it in six months or three weeks. So it's not like Raj got it in three months. So I have to get it in three months. It might not happen. But you just have to be, it's like fishing. It's just like fishing. And your goals have to be straight. Your your why has to be important. And never give up. Never give up. I mean, if I gave up, I could have gone back to India to my, my parents. I could have started a job. Um, I went to, to uh, learn to drive a truck. So I wanted to be in the truck industry. I mean, never give up. Just do what you have to do to succeed. That's it. Well, Charlotte has uh, just a comment. I want to say I really admire your courage and dedication to your family. You're an inspiration to me. Thank you. That's from Charlotte. So. Thank you. 
Um, so, you know, there is a lot of negativity in there. And one of the advantages of working with uh, people that are not negative, because we all lose our way. We all get frustrated. We all feel like we're uh, on the wrong path, even though we are on the right, the wrong path. And sometimes we, f we stop swimming um, just a few inches from the shore and you can still drown. You have to keep swimming until you hit the shore. And sometimes it's difficult. And, um, you know, um, we have questions on marketing. You know, how are you marketing? What, what marketing strategy um, did you use to find your deals? I, I started with Craigslist, which is everybody's basic. That was where Craigslist, I could never think I could make $21,000 from that Craigslist. From, uh, that's where I found the deal. And, um, and then commercial, we all know we, we just had that training where we find commercial single family homes. If somebody sits on the internet for an hour every day for seven days, they will know exactly there are, there are 10,000 wholesalers, there are all kinds of websites, there's Craigslist, there's everywhere. Yeah. I can't name one because there's everywhere. Yeah, the deals are everywhere. There's no shortage of deals, actually. Well, what you, exactly. What you, I think you finally realize, Raj, and again, everyone has the aha moment at a different time, uh, is that there's every house, every deal is a deal. I just had that three days before. Yes. We make it a deal yes. by saying no. Yes. Every deal is a deal. You just have to know how to say no to the deal that they're saying and then rework it to a deal that you want. And that takes exactly. a little bit of no more knowledge than most have just on this call. But as you get more education, um, so I guess the question I have is, was the education journey that you've taken worth it? Did it pay off? And there was no way I would have been where I am because I remember meeting you in trade day and you said, get a mobile home park. And I said, what's that? And you, then you showed me a picture and I still tell some people I own a mobile home park and they think I own a children park. Somebody thinks I own a, some kind of an amusement park. Some things I want a park. Like, why would you want a park? I'm like, he doesn't understand what, because even I didn't understand what most people living in cities probably don't even understand what a park is. Yeah. So without you, I would have had a nice gas station in Canada at 5% and been a happy guy. Well, you borrow the money at 3% and you make a 5%, meaning you make a 2% on, on the money and you're actually an, a, a slave to your, your, your industry again because you're the yeah. one operating the gas station again. Yeah, or, or, come, exactly. or whatever it is. So how much work do you do in these properties now, Raj? So, you know, we talk about work or not work. I remember one, I, I remember the, you, you, you're, you're, Telling me that you had a day off and it was like the first day off you ever had. Give us that that quick experience real quick if you don't mind. Yeah, before uh, I used to take Monday off and that was the best thing. I, I used to love the fact that um, I used to think about my tenants to get ready in the morning to go to work. So I got paid and I don't have to do that. And the good news is 1st of January, I'm, I'm shutting off my POS business and I'm literally retired. I, I, I'm retarded, retired kind of thing. So my POS business is gone and I'm shutting it off and I have no other business to do in Canada right now and I don't intend to do anyways. And are you, are you, again, are you happy? Are you, do you need to work now or are you? I don't want to work, man. You made me lazy. <laughs> that never said it on your seminar. We'll make you lazy. That should be your <laughs> seminar. We'll make you lazy. You hardworking people. We'll make you lazy. I don't think you're able to be lazy, Raj. I don't think that's possible. But I understand. I, I know. Yeah. I'm just kidding. But man, I just want to. I I just want a ten million dollar deal in 2017. That that's the only goal I have. Well, it's not that hard, man. I saw that in, in that three day already. Listen, and, well, and you're with me. I'm not. I'm not. I keep bugging you when it gets hard. Well, I know why. Well, we're here. We're our commitment is for life. Like, um, you know, it's, some people worry that I'm. If if you start engaging with me, that you get me for a year and that's it. I'm still working with you, Raj. I'm still working with people like Frank and Linda who are just closing our mobile home park. Um, you know, there's tons and tons of success stories that, that I don't want to take away the limelight on you, but. Um, my job is to really help you until you don't need me anymore. That's really what you paid me for. And we've been friends. Uh, you know, our friendship is, it runs deep. I've, I've met your family. Uh, I know you at a, you know, at a, at more than most do. I think you've let me in, in your life. And I really am honored that, but you really inspire me and, and, and you're the fuel that keeps me going. 
And the reason that I'm, I've put this together is as an educator, as someone that also is surrounded by negativity, because as you know, I'm, I, I get a lot of arrows for what I do. Uh, there are people even on this call that have thrown arrows at me themselves, you know, that uh, I'm... I'm actually glad because they're not looking for deals. <laughs> well, that's the thing is y y you can either focus on negativity or you can focus on results. You can't do both. You can focus on problems, but you can't focus on both. And as an educator, um, my job, my mission is to change people's lives. It's, that's, that's what I'm here for. I, and when you look at me in the eye and you say... Um, some of the things that you've said to me, and I literally come to tears because I know that I've really impacted you and your family's life. And, yeah. and you've, you're the hero because you've fallen, you've done what I've asked, which is what most people don't do. You've, I've said, Raj, this is the task this week, and you've done it. Raj, this is the task next week, and you've done it. And you've never I did not it done because it. Because I had no other choice. And I knew. I didn't know, listen, I, I never knew you're going to be my friend and, and my mentor for life. I thought this was one year commitment. So time was running short. And I had to do, um, because there was no other choice. And in, in, in. luckily I have a kind of, um, like I'm not a multitasker. I just look at one internal vision and just do it. So you were right in, in front of me and I, I focused on you and, and, and here I am. And again, man, I've already said that before. You think you change your student's life. When you change my kid's life and, and, and with my folded hands all the time, I say thank you, man. I, I, you, you are the magician of my life and always shall be. And my kid's life. Well, I, um, it's an honor that I, I mean, will... How many people on this call would make $1,000 a day being retired, sitting at home and doing nothing? Well, you um, you just followed the recipe, man. And uh, I, I, as much as I'd like to say it's it's uh, I helped, I did. I uh, definitely was part of that journey, but uh, you've done it. You um, you're the hero, man, and really more than I am. I want to. Um, Thanks, I, I I I admire you. Uh, I respect you more than uh, more than you know. Even though I'm still technically the boss, uh, I have to Don't let my guard down. Me. And the uh, guru always remains the guru. I understand, but I want to say that you you uh, when I see your actions, it humbles me, and I. Uh, I, I admire how you um, put your family first and how you've um, been very respectful um, to them, to your family, to your beliefs, and uh, how you've taken me in as a friend. I, I admire that, and I really want to um, thank you for being on the interview. Um, I'm hoping that some of you learned something today. And again, there's some more time here. I'll take two more questions if you have any. Um, you know, he's basically just follow the steps. And uh, there's no magic recipe. Follow your heart and think big, dream big, and, and believe in yourself more than Marco, more than anybody else. First, believe in yourself. If you can't believe you can drive a Mercedes, you'll never drive one. Right. Well, you, um, you all are multimillionaires. You just don't know it yet. And it's a matter of just uh, when we met, uh, your, your net worth has doubled or tripled since we've met. I believe, and I, I don't know the more than that, more than that, yeah, more than that, and I've crossed that million dollar mark, which was my uh, my threshold because I always thought I can't own anything more than that, and now we have added a zero to it. So hopefully next year another interview, ten million dollars, bro. Yeah, well, it's it's the same deal whether you do a hundred thousand dollar deal, a million dollar deal, or a ten million dollar deal. And now I know it's easy to find five million dollars yeah. than fifty thousand dollars. Well, it is easier to find fifty or ten million because. Yeah, because you're richer than you think. Just like Scotia, man, you're richer Scotia than you man. think. You're richer than you think. <laughs> you're richer I, than I you can't think. just get off that of my mind. You're richer than you think. Sure and I always thought people think you need a lot of money to get into real estate. I really think you need hard work and determination to to do anything, whether it's real estate or drive a car. You just need determination and focus. Okay, so I have a couple questions here. So, uh, someone says they have an accent um, and they feel self conscious about how they speak to people. What do you have to say about that? Use email, use tax. And you know what? When you have the money in your pocket and you and you follow the system, nobody cares about your accent. Even if you can't speak or not, you're deaf, dumb. You could look the worst. They care about one thing, and that's your money. Yes, that's right. They don't care about your accent. So when someone wants to give up, why should they continue? That's another question. What, what keeps you going? 
why shouldn't I give up? Well, keep your why in front of you. And if you're wise, if you're wise, your Vegas is, is um, it's have a nice uh, uh, spend money in casinos, then that's not your real why. Create your real why. If you like, if you hate your boss, you hate your job, that why, as long as the why is alive, your fire is alive. If you kill your why, your fire will die. So what is your why, Rush? My love for my kids. And that shall always remain. It's my kids that... I, I, if I die tomorrow, I know they will get $1,000 a day and they are going to be rich than most people would even after they work and study, get a job or whatever else. So my wife, I can die in peace and I can be happy knowing my kids are taken care of well. And there are 150 families that wake up in the morning, go to work because there's a landlord to be paid. That's my path line, bro. <laughs> very good all right well um can i start without money in the pocket is uh, patrick lamb's question if i have no money in my pocket not, you make i have money. not used any money out of my pocket yet to buy 150 units not you, even a penny i'm going to ask you one more time if i don't have any money in my pocket can i buy property my next ten million dollar deal deal is gonna be a case study of buying a property without money in the pocket, and that's my that's my uh, challenge to myself. And I need your help, bro, in front of these people. We'll buy a ten million dollar building with no money out of pocket. Well, I already know how to do that. You saw me do it. So, but but here here's here's the thing: is you made twenty one thousand dollars without a nickel out of your pocket by wholesaling. Yes. The property that you bought in Crystal River, you used the bank's money. You didn't use any of your own money, not $1 out of your pocket. That's true. The, the, the uh, mobile home park, you actually uh, you found an investor. Where did you meet this guy? Do you remember? The, the money that you got for the… Uh, oh, yes. In the plane. When yes. my flight was missed, I remember. Now I know. I'm like thinking, I've actually forgot. My flight got missed, and this guy has nice uh, shoes and Prada jeans, and just I'm like the investor. So I kind of uh, we spent the on the airport. We were together. We spent some time together. What do you do? What do I do? Did we became friends? Chit chatted, and and I pitched him, and and he says yes. So I found an investor who put the money, and I gave fifty percent of the deal to him. But I still make fifty percent money without money out of my pocket. Right. And I can do it all along. Right. So you found an investor, someone that wanted to invest. You put a package together. You uh, presented to him. He funded the deal and uh, zero money out of your pocket. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. So there's really no – so the only thing that stops someone from doing something like that is is knowledge. You had the knowledge to do it, to wholesale. You were gonna you were gonna throw that away. I said no. Get more knowledge. You did. You got knowledge on how to uh, make even more money out of the deal after the deal. You get knowledge on that you actually don't even you don't want the deal in order to get good deals. That's important knowledge to have. Very which, important deal, which most people don't get yet. But as they start learning more, they'll understand that. Um, you got someone um, basically that they realize that the return was higher investing with you than it was anywhere else. There's money everywhere. No matter where you sit, no matter where you stand, even at Tim Hortons, the person next to you probably has money sitting around. If you have the right knowledge and know what to say and how to say it, you'll be able to actually get money out of pretty much anybody. The only thing stopping you from being where you need to be is more knowledge and the courage to use it. Exactly. And there's one more thing I like to add. Some people say we're so busy that I can't do real estate. Well, but they're busy in what? That's the question. That's, that should be their why of being busy all day. I remember you and me in traffic jam. We were talking about this. We were in traffic jam. We said, how do people go to, every morning to work and come back to work and work in this traffic jam? I would shoot myself. My, so, which I would shoot myself. A traffic jam to me is, is, is so, internet but these not working. People do it every day. I know. It's, I just don't, I don't get it. So what are they busy in? Yeah. They're so busy being busy, they're too busy to be wealthy. That's the truth. I mean, everybody watches TV, everybody sleeps, one, cut one hour of TV and have one hour of sleep every day for one year. That's all it takes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're running out of time. Um, um, you know, that's, that's that. So 
guys, um, other than that, I, I hope you guys are a little encouraged. I hope you guys are a little inspired. Raj literally went from zero to hero. Um, his why has always been consistent, looking after his children. His why is not, I want a vacation. His why is not, I want to go to Vegas and get hookers and blow. His why is not, um, you know, I want a better car. I want a better this. I want a better that. His why is, when I die, I want my two special needs ki kids to be okay and not have to worry. And he can die in peace. That is a very powerful why. So you, if you focus on uh, getting more educated in this business with the right people, and there's you know lots of information out there that's terrible, and there's lots of good information, just align yourself with the right people. Make sure you know that you're on the right path and understand some of the things that we've said are a little bit cryptic. Like someone said, what do you mean I have to say no to a deal in order to get it? Well, not quite. It's, that's a little bit more on stage three or four when you realize that you have to say no to every deal in order for it to get better, basically. If you're buying a property and you say, no, I don't want it at that price, they come back to you with a better price. But most people are wanting the deal to be accepted when we actually want it to be rejected. It's, um, it's a more advanced concept than we have time to go through right now. But Raj, I really want to uh, thank you so very much for being A, an inspiration to us all, B, um, not giving up when most people do, and seeing just being an incredible human being. You're just a really good guy, and I'm uh, honored to be your friend. I'm uh, very pleased that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working with you. Uh, and you did warn me that I would, you would be one of my better students. You warned me when remember we first started. Remember that. That was my first line. Remember that. Yes. I said, if I work with you, I'm going to be your, one of your better students. And you were, uh, you're actually right. So uh, I'm uh, very proud of you. You've done very, very good. So guys. Well, thank you very much for taking care of my kids. Thank you very much for taking care of my family. And thank you very much for making me part of your life and family as well. And letting me stay in your home and. And all the fun we have on the side, other than the business, but more importantly, taking care of my kids and, and making me where I am. I, I don't think two years before I could think I'll be retired, shutting off my business with my own hands. It's like shutting off the same store I set up myself and, and be retired. One year, next my one year, I don't think I want to do anything but just travel the world and, and have some fun in my life, which I've not had for so many years. So thank you very much. And for everybody who's listening, there are tons of deals. Nobody can, you know, um, uh, hit into other. There, there's so many deals. The only thing that's going to stop you is you yourself. Believe in yourself. Trust in God, and and just do a good job, and everybody will get a deal. And just don't 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 give up. Raj, thank you so much. Um, thank you. Bro. This is uh, recorded for those of you who uh, want a recording of this. Um, I will make it available. Uh, Raj, thank you so very much. Uh, God bless you and your children as well. And uh, a couple questions on Trump, I guess. Trump is going to get into power. Um, are you worried or are you, are you excited? I don't care. My rent goes up every year. So I don't <laughs> care who comes into the power, man. Come on. <laughs> it, honestly, if people start screaming, uh, scramming, I'm going to buy their property at a discount and I'm going to make even I more money. I have one question. Everybody asks me, yes. how can you buy property in the U.S. now? Canadian dollar is so down. I'm like, thank God you don't know the real stuff. Yeah. You you spend in U.S. dollars, you make money in U.S. dollars. Yeah. So what's the difference? Yeah, exactly. So my rent goes up every year, so I don't care whoever comes. It's the same thing for me. Good for you, man. Good for you. Thank you. Both. Hugs and kisses to your family. Guys, thank you so much for being on the call. We're out of time. Uh, hopefully this was inspirational for you. I hope you learned something. And uh, stay tuned uh, You know, for any goodies that we have. Don't miss Jam Sessions. Those are every, uh, every Wednesday. Seller calls are every Tuesdays. You can actually hear deals doing done live. Uh, and if anyone ever uh, wants an opportunity to work with, uh, with us in the future, I'm sure you know how to find us. Guys, thanks so very much. Raj, thank you, thank you very much, guys. Thank you for taking your time out on a on a on a on an evening. I know your time is precious, and I respect it and I value it. Thank you so much, Raj. God bless. Thanks again. Thanks, man. Take thank care. you very much. Bye, 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 everybody. All right, guys. Thanks again. Good night, everybody. See you later.